Hello, and welcome to our online tutorial on how to complete the Entity Information page for service providers. From the Select Entity Type drop-down menu, select Service Provider. You must fill out all fields except those marked optional. First, specify whether the entity is an incumbent local exchange carrier, or ILEG for short. If it is, you'll need to do two things. First, you'll need to enter study area codes and form 499 filer IDs further down this page. Second, you must file fixed voice subscription data, which is done later in the filing process. In the next field, enter the brand name or names associated with your entity. Click the field, type in the name or names, press tab or enter on your keyboard to save the form. To delete a brand name, click the X beside it. Next, enter the holding company or common control name. Again, if you've previously submitted information, it should be pre-populated. If you need to make any changes, click the edit icon. If you're a first-time user, you must submit data for this field. Enter the parent company name or names associated with the filings of all your commonly owned or controlled entities. You can select from a pre-populated list. If your name isn't listed, type in the full name and press enter. Next is the URL your entity uses for primary business. Enter this information. If there isn't a website, click the checkbox indicating there is no website. Now let's move on to study area codes. Voice service providers eligible for Universal Service Fund support have a six-digit study area code, including all ILEX and some fixed voice or mobile service providers. You can search by study area code or type in the specific field and click the name to add it to your form. If you make a mistake, simply click X to delete it. If there is no study area code, then you're ready to click the checkbox below the form. Next is Form 499 Filer IDs. All voice service providers should have a Form 499 filer ID, including all ILEC providers. Search either by six-digit code or by Form 499 filer ID's name. When you see the correct Form 499 filer ID, click the name to add to the form. If you choose the wrong ID, click X to delete it. If your entity doesn't have a Form 499 ID, click the checkbox. And now, on to contact information. Your data contact is the person who can answer questions from the FCC. You may provide a different data contact when certifying your submission. Your emergency operations contact should be the go-to person for network status information during natural disasters and other emergencies. You may also provide a different emergency operations contact when certifying your submission. Your certifying official contact should be the person whose signature confirms all your information is correct and true in your submission. This includes his or her address. Click International Address if needed. You can specify another certifying official contact for each submission. Your certifying engineer should be either the certified professional engineer or corporate engineering officer who directly knows about and is responsible for generating availability data, including supporting data. Your certifying engineer must have examined all your information for accuracy and accordance with your entity's ordinary course of network design and engineering. If you check the box, this company submits only fixed voice subscription data and is not required to submit an engineering certification, you will not be allowed to upload availability or supporting data once you reach the Submission Overview page. You can enter different names for all four contacts or use the same information in multiple places. Once you've entered all the information, click Save. This will automatically redirect you to the Submissions Dashboard page. This concludes our tutorial on how to complete the Entity Information page for service providers. Please remember to periodically check our website at www.fcc.gov forward slash broadband data for links to commission orders, notices, tutorials, FAQs, and other resources. Questions about the BDC filing requirements may be submitted to the FCC by clicking on the Submit a Request button that's located on the Help Center webpage. Thank you again for your effort to prepare for the upcoming filing.